G'day everyone, Viv here from Battle Bunker. I hope you're all keeping well. It's been a long time since I've shown my face on YouTube. I've had a lot of problems recently and I'm slowly, slowly working my way through them. Um, so I thought I'd just stick, stick the camera on and let it roll while I paint up some scenery. People have been asking to see some stuff that I've painted. Um, so why not? Let's, uh, let's stick the camera on and watch while I paint this uh, mammoth sections of... Uh, Rock canyons. So you can see some of this stuff has already been undercoated black. Um, I'm just using an old brush here. It's got uh, glue and a whole bunch of other crap in it. Uh, I, I did them uh, originally. They were a little bit different. I added some uh, small pieces on the edge here to give some cover. So as you're moving around the sides, you've got a little bit of extra cover, etc. So I'm going to go back and black base everything. I did start the process of painting them up with a brown uh, base coat, etc. But uh, like I said, we'll speed this up into super fast forward motion and you can see one of these pieces come to life. When I undercoat stuff by hand I generally give quite a liberal coat of black paint so that uh, uh, and it's just a normal uh, house paint for painting your walls uh, just to give a little bit of extra support because I use a lot of white foam because of the problems we have in Australia getting hold of uh, the common insulation foam that people in cold climates use frequently. Uh, I use the black paint to help just provide a little bit of extra support. Because this foam has been covered in a plaster mix, I could spray it black, but like I said, I, uh, I like to undercoat it by hand. Obviously it takes a lot longer and it can be quite fiddly getting into some of the smaller bits but I like to undercoat it by hand. I do touch it up afterwards with a spray can, but I like to undercoat by hand just to give that little bit of extra uh, protection to my plaster mix. It's not very interesting watching someone black base something, but uh, I'm gonna zip through and do everything else here and then we'll come back to the, the initial painting and slowly work our way up through the, uh, the layering and the dry brushing and all that sort of stuff check out my battle bunker tv shirt so um i'll see you guys back once i finish black basing the rest of these rock structures right so i've decided i'm not going to spray them to touch them up i've been using a much smaller brush instead to get into some of the smaller gaps that uh that i need to get into simply because it's night time and it's raining outside so uh, i thought bugger it I'll just use a little paintbrush to get into all the smaller gaps. So I'm going to whack a heater on these and let them dry for a little while. It's quite muggy today, or tonight. It's raining and warm, but uh, I'm going to put a hair dryer on them. You can see my hair drying contraption there behind me. It's a, a hair dryer for doing your hair attached to a, a, a camera tripod with a clamp. Works well. Right, now that everything's been uh, undercoated black, it's time to start putting down some paint. Now, I was talking about wet blending stuff. I've got four different types of paint here. The black that I use to undercoat everything. Actually, I'll get a fifth one as well. Uh, the black that I use to undercoat everything, a brown color, and two different shades of gray, and I'm gonna grab a pot of white paint as well. And I'm gonna use all five of those paints together to create a a more realistic looking rock effect than just dry brushing on successive layers of grey or brown or whatever. Now I said I'd show you a piece that uh, that I did before. <laughs> it's a very basic sort of uh, dry brush. This has got some browns, some reds and some light browns and all that sort of stuff in it. Now it creates a nice looking effect but uh, it looks like something that's been dry brushed. So. Um, I want to try and create something a little bit different. It's going to be part experiment. Um, so I'm just going to get some pallets out, so just some pieces of cardboard, whack some paint down on the individual pieces of cardboard, and, uh, and start applying them on and see what sort of effect we come up with. So I'm going to put down a brown color first. And this I'm just going to uh, give a fairly liberal coat sort of over brushing more than anything else. This brush is shit. I want to pretty much cover most of the black 
as you would with any sort of dry brush. First layer is generally pretty expansive, 70%, 80% sort of coverage. Cool, now that's going to be my brown brush, so I'll leave that alone. I'm going to take my black out again. And I'm just going to go back over it. I'm just lightly touching it this time just to uh, bring some of that black back. That's my black brush. Get some grey paint out. Now this I'm going to do slightly differently with the edge of the brush. I'm just going to move it back and forward along Now I'm going to repeat this several times just to get these colors to blend themselves together. Whip. Now I've got a lighter colour grey here, it's almost white. Who knows, this might end up looking like a giant bird poo. <laughs> sort of looking like it at the moment. Anyone who's seen my videos knows that uh, I like to work with my hands. Blending colours in and muting them and all that sort of stuff. Not a true dry, uh, wet brush, blah, blah, blah. not a true wet blend I suppose you could say as you would with a miniature. But I'm calling it a wet blend because the paint's all wet. I'm not letting anything dry as I as I apply the layers here. Now you can't really see the detail on the one that I've wet blended as much as you can on the one that I've dry brushed. So I'm going to let that dry for a little bit, stick it under a dryer, and let it uh, dry up. Then I'll come back and do some final dry brushing on it to make those details pop, and we'll see what it looks like. Nice and quick and simple. There's the one that's been dry brushed, looks nice and pretty. There's the one that I've sort of modelled together my bird poo design. And uh, when I dry brush this one up, we'll come back and have a look at them side by side and we'll see which one's better. Okay, so we're back for our final dry brush. And our final highlight. Well, maybe our final highlight. Let's have a quick look. We'll just... Uh, Mix up another bit of colour here, our brown, some of that grey colour I was talking about. You know, I actually like the old one better. Probably because it has a, ha a sharper highlight, sharper contrast, because there's so much... so much darkness on the other one. 
So I'm going to mix up one more final highlight. And this is going to be a strong highlight. And we'll give it a blast and see what happens. Okay, so the first uh, flock I'm going to put down is something called, uh, well it's one of our flocks called Swamp Sorbet. It's kind of like a brownish, greenish sort of colour. Um, that's going to give us our, our base coat for the detailing. Now the painting and detailing scenery is exactly the same as uh, miniature painting. I mean the, the miniature is only going to look as good as what it's mounted on. So we want this to... Uh, have just something that makes it pop a little bit more than just that five minute paint job we gave it. So we'll see what we can do to the base to make a five minute paint job look like something a bit better. I'm not covering the whole base here. I'm just sort of mottling the glue around. I mean I'm covering a fair portion of this base. But not everything. I'm gonna put this flock down first. Then we're gonna add some tufts and some reeds and some small bushes and that type of stuff. I put staples in the newspaper, bloody idiots. So this first layer I'm just sprinkling on over the top, letting it fall down where it needs to. Then I'll quickly give it a tap. There we go, we've started to get some life already. So there's our initial, our initial layer. And we'll come back shortly once this is dried for a little bit and start to work with a few more colours, some, uh, some uh, clump foliage, a little bit of static grass and some uh, reeds just to make it really pop. Okay, so the piece has been drying for a little while. In the meantime, I've fished out two other colours. One's called Shamrock. It's kind of like a yellowish sort of greenish colour. You can see the contrast against uh, the piece that we're working on so far. And the other one is called Canopy. It's obviously uh, a nice sort of bright green colour. Well, not bright green colour, but sort of a normal sort of grass sort of colour. And again, you can see the contrast against the piece. We're going to use both of these in uh, uh, to, to, to continue detailing. I've mixed up some PVA in some uh, water. I call it wet PVA. Um, and I've got some... Uh, some of these little dropper bottles. It's just like a little squeezy thing here and it sucks up uh, liquid. Because we've already done our base coat here, it's going to be difficult to brush glue onto this, so I use the little the droppers here to uh, drop around the place.
So I'm just going to try and clean up as much of that glue as I can. And with a soft brush, this is a really soft brush, I'm just going to gently spread the glue just so that it moves around a little bit more because you would have noticed that uh, on this piece it uh, had clumped up a little bit there we go now I'm going to take some of my shamrock colour and this time instead of covering the whole piece I'm just going to gently try and hit those areas that we got our glue on. Now I'm not covering the whole area because I'm going to go back with the other colour and hit them again. And whilst that glue is still wet, I'm going to come back with, in this case, canopy and just fill in my my spots basically. Now this one can be a bit more sort of laissez-faire because I have uh, covered some of that glue with the shamrock so the shamrock or whatever colour you're using is going to absorb some of that uh, some of that glue You can see now we've got a little bit of a blend happening. There we go, starting to look a little bit more uh, like it has a little bit of life. Now you can see that some of the areas, certainly this area down the bottom here, is very sort of secular. There's a very distinct mark between our two uh, our two flocks here. That's fine. We're going to use some of that area here to blend in a little bit of uh, shrub foliage and some se um, some uh, what are they called reeds, etc. So again, we'll let this dry up for a little bit. Um, I may even whilst we're we're here, just go ahead and touch up some of those areas. Okay, let's start detailing the piece. I've got some uh, little reeds that. Uh, I pulled off a boot polish brush, sprayed with some spray paint. I've got some pre-prepared static grass clumps here and a couple of different clump foliages, a dark green and some really fine, uh, I can't remember what this is, uh, I know it's a Woodland Scenics product. So let's get into it. I've got a little toothpick here as well so I can make small holes which I can push my reeds into. So I'm just going to put one up here. A little bit too much PVA on the top one, so I'm just squeezing the reeds into the PVA to put them in there, into the bottle. You can sort of see how they're coming up. I reckon I might give them a light dry brush once they're all set in place. So there's a few reeds placed around the place with this uh, clump foliage, not the clump foliage the pre-prepared static grass. We just need to snip some of it off. It peels off of this uh, backing paper quite easily and you can see it comes up in
Once that dries, you won't get that the PVA. Once it dries, you'll it'll clear itself up. But just to give you an example, that's kind of what the static grass looks like. I'm going to add a small couple of pieces of uh, this uh, small. Oh, I wish I could remember what it's called. Once these set up for a little bit, and that PVA underneath is dry, then I'll come back again with my uh, watered down PVA in that dropper bottle, those little uh, droppers, and drop a couple of drops of PVA on there just to set those in place. So I'm going to go around and keep on detailing the rest of this and we'll come back when I'm finished. Right, so there we go, she's finished. From black base to painted and detailed. I'm pretty happy with how it's come up. It's nice and easy to do, it's quick and easy to do. If you guys want something made or something done, we're certainly taking commissions. We've got a few jobs we're doing at the moment, a couple of commission tables, painting some figures and all that sort of business, but we've always got room for more. So if you need something, give me a yell or get hold of the guys over at uh, Battle Bunker TV and um, we'll rock something out for you. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you real soon. Ciao.